tandem. When you woke up this morning, did you purposely say, I'm going to confine myself to a box? Or do you just avoid putting any conscious thought into today? When you're busy going at it, literally or figuratively, do you ever find yourself pausing for a moment to realize what's going on? Or are you just reacting? When you hear the saying, may I have your attention please, do you continue as you were? Or do you consider the information you're about to receive might actually be valuable? When I was growing up, my mother used to ask me to do things. And sometimes her reasoning was, because I said so. Looking back, I wish perhaps I took the time to pause, think, and consider the ramifications of my choices. Good Friday to you. Today is Friday, October 7th, 2016, and this is episode number 20 of Pause, Think, Consider. I want to take the time to thank everybody for tuning in to today's episode. I'd like everyone who listens to today's episode to please send me an email. This is jesse, J-E-S-S-E, at pausethinkconsider.com, and let me know what your favorite episode so far has been. If today's episode is the first one you've listened to, perhaps that's the episode that you choose. If you have been a frequent listener, you've heard episodes number 1 through 20 so far, then please let me know which your favorite one is. Again, send me an email at jesse at pausethinkconsider.com. Today's episode is about the topic of settling. The term settling has a very negative connotation socially right now. There's this mantra of always improving, always optimizing, never being satisfied. It goes very much along with the psychology of advertising. That each and every new product that comes out on the market is going to make you better. That's why the cosmetic industry is so prevalent and why it is so popular. Billions of dollars go into cosmetics and lotions and face care and hygienic products to make yourself continually the best you possibly can be. And while you probably know individuals, and you might even be one of these types of individuals yourself. But there's certain types of individuals that just never seem satisfied. They're perfectionists to a fault. And perhaps their industry and their job and their career is one in such that they cannot settle. It can't settle, ever. And when I think of individuals that fit this category, that they're just never satisfied. There's really three that come to mind. The first one being a general manager. And I think pretty specifically along the lines of a sports general manager, a professional sports team general manager. But the whole sense of a general manager of an organization. This could even be collegiately, a collegiate sports, a, a recruiter. I find these individuals just the nature of their job that they can't settle because everything is always moving. While your business is great and booming today, your competitors are behind you and they are gaining on you. And it's almost this paralysis 
by analysis of the data and this fear that you are you've worked so hard to get to the top of the mountain that you will do anything to stay up there and so you're constantly analyzing constantly looking at the numbers constantly looking at what could we possibly fit here what could we do there it's why in sports the term everybody likes to use it about a, a dynasty a dynasty any team that wins three out of five championships considered a dynasty when I think of dynasties I think of the Boston Celtics I think of UCLA men's basketball team. Those are dynasties. Not three out of five years. That's not a dynasty. But the amount of pressure in order to continually stay at the top of their game, to continually ensure that the competition is not getting on your heels is one in which as a general manager you can never be satisfied with the work that you have other individuals that I have personally encountered and this may be a blanket statement but I found and I grouped these all together because it's really it's really almost a performer so artists, writers, musicians. I found in large part individuals that are very creative are never really satisfied with the product. They're constantly tweaking it, constantly looking for ways to improve it. can almost be debilitating the perfectionism that they have it's why musicians new albums can take years years to come out with because things just simply don't sound right ah what if i did this here what if i brought in this other artist to help me with this what if i added this symbol here or if I added this word to that sentence there artists writers musicians are constantly trying to optimize and improve their work to get it to the best they possibly can a pursuit of perfectionism and then we kind of already hit on the sports topic but I really look at athletes I look at athletes as people that are never satisfied and I think the result of that is the pursuit of records the pursuit of being in the history book the pursuit of of your legacy and what it ultimately means when your career is over it's why in the Olympics despite doing the three-peat winning the gold medal in both the 100 and 200 meter dash for three consecutive Olympics Usain Bolt was disappointed I'll link to the video on the website disappointed when he didn't break the world record one quite easily but disappointed he didn't break the world record was able to be satisfied in his accomplishments going down as arguably one of the greatest Olympians 
of all time. Yet a great defining moment of never being satisfied. I even look at the song by the Rolling Stones. That song, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. It is woven within the fabric of our society that settling it's always a topic it's always at the forefront of people's minds whether it be with relationships whether it be with job situations whether it be with the selection for the university that you went to or the purchases that you made did you settle Did you do enough vetting? If you settled, why? Why didn't you push a little more? Why didn't you try a little harder? Why didn't you put in more time, a little extra due diligence? What would that have done for you? And socially, we're always seeking that. It's just like I talked about a few weeks ago with regards to the pursuit of being selfless and the whole concept of self-null and not having the ability to be 100% selfless in any action that you have. And the whole idea that the word selfish is a negative. That it has these negative connotations. The same as the word settle or settling. What about looking at it from the perspective of settling in? Settling into your new home, settling into your new job, settling into your community. I'd venture to say those are positive aspects. But we have this constant evaluation, this constant judgment, both internally and externally. Settling is a bad thing. In looking for various third-party opinions on settling. When I did a search, really the only positive aspect that I saw, the only positive connotations that settling had, was as I just mentioned, settling in. But there were hundreds of thousands of articles about not settling. Two in particular that I will link to on the website that are worth reading and worth your time. The first one, very quick, painless. Why settling is hard work by Laura J. Hamilton. It really goes into not necessarily looking at saying settling's a bad thing, but actually coming to grips with the fact that you're going to settle. Coming to those terms. Another great article And again, it's very much settling. It's very career-oriented. I relate it personally a lot to relationships. I'll get into that in a minute. But another perspective, stop settling for the myth of work-life balance and choose to live by Dana Shaw Aramoto. 
Work-life balance is a very relevant topic right now, socially. Because we are doing so much. We are multitasking. We are in that pursuit of perfection. That now, company culture and work-life balance. I know when I talk to a company, I always ask about work-life balance. And I'll never forget. I'll leave the company name nameless. But I will never forget when I went into this interview and I asked about work-life balance. And to give you an idea of this company, it's one of those companies that always has openings. They are always hiring. It's not a Craigslist type hire, but they always have jobs. And not even necessarily at the entry level. They are always hiring. And for some people, the perspective would be, well, that's great. That means they are constantly growing. I look at that as a bit of a negative. That they're not able to retain those employees, that they are burnt out. And when I had the conversation with the VP of marketing, and he not only in that time said, don't BS me. First time I'd ever heard that in a professional interview-like setting. But I asked the question, I said, what is the work-life balance like? Just trying to get a sense of what it's like to work here. And he said to me, you know, when we launched this company about four years ago, I ate, slept, and bled for this company. I was putting in 18-hour days. I worked my tail off to get this organization to where it is now. So you want to talk to me about work-life balance? Well, that's on you. That's on you. If you're able to get a work-life balance, great. But we're here to grow this organization. Probably the best thing that company ever did was they didn't call me back. Some people thrive on environments like that. They love that competition. As I mentioned, we are such a society of always improving, always optimizing. The number of self-help books and motivational speakers and seminars and workshops to improve It doesn't matter the aspect, whether it's fitness, whether it's in life, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in a specific activity, golf, tennis, hockey, basketball. We are in the constant pursuit of perfection and unwilling. It is unacceptable socially to settle. And I mentioned before about the aspect of settling with regards to relationships. And while I haven't personally had the opportunity to walk down the aisle so far, at some point it will happen. I have talked to several people within my circle. And even for the most confident individuals, the individuals that knew they had found their life partner, that it was perfect, there was that doubt. There were those questions, especially the closer it got. This is both men and women contemplating, wondering, am I doing the right thing? Could I do better? 
do I really want to tie myself into this for the rest of my life? I think it's why divorce is so prevalent. That idea of you can always do better. It's why monogamous relationships, which personally, not for me. I heard a guy the other day was at a coffee shop talking about this. Talking about the fact how he's an individual who needs to be in multiple relationships at the same time. And he finally found somebody that feels the same way. And the interesting thing is, in him talking to the barista about this, they obviously were regulars, had a regular relationship to be talking on that type of level. But talking about, yes, I need to be in a relationship where it's very open and I can go and come and do as I please with whomever I please. And then yet on the same moment, talked about how Yeah, I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know that this is a long-term relationship. I think settling, the term settling, some people feel like it ties them down. That it holds them back. That in getting to a long-term a long-term, committed, serious relationship that it's going to hold you back. You won't be able to be the man or the woman that you truly wanted to be. And as long as I'm free, I can do what I want, when I want to do it, that's going to bring me happiness. Well, here's my personal opinion When it comes to settling. I think it comes down to three things. Number one. Be the best that you can be. Well, that is a vote in favor of never settling. On the surface. It's really... Taking that apart and simply doing your best. If you've done your best that you absolutely can and you don't reach the success level that you intended or maybe desired, that doesn't mean you settled. That doesn't mean that you weren't successful. Just because you didn't hit that goal, but you did the absolute best you could, that doesn't mean that you settled. But to not do your best, to not put in your effort, the time, into whatever it is that you do, your job, your family, your wife, your husband, your partner, your yoga practice, CrossFit, All of those things you should pursue to be the best that you can be. And if you're not able to reach the level, find ways to celebrate and relish the success that you do achieve. That would be step number two or Item number two, find ways to celebrate and relish successes. We are so busy with a constant and consistent basis of always improving, always seeking for a level up, being the general manager of our lives, that when we 
get to that next level. We hit that plateau. We have those minor successes that we are so busy looking into the future that we don't actually take the time to celebrate. I worked for a company that we internally had to have the discussion that when we had a success, that we we quite literally had to script out the policy and procedure for how to handle success. Because we were so poor at it. We were so quick to be judgmental, to look at how we could be better, to always improve, that we weren't taking the time to actually celebrate those successes. And so as a result, the environment was very toxic. It's very mentally trying. It was very easy to get burnt out because you never felt good enough. And so we had to have an internal meeting to talk about how to celebrate success. And everyone top down, upper management, acknowledged the fact, yeah, we really don't, we don't celebrate success very well. We're so busy trying to get to our overall higher goals that success is the expectation. Having a successful quarterly report, having a new business that has been won, that it's just cast aside about what's next, what do we have to do next? So you need to do that for yourself. Do what my company had to do internally because they didn't have the self-awareness and recognition about the burden it caused because it will cause a burden. It will cause stress. It will actually hamper and hinder your ability to reach your goals by not celebrating each and every step along the way. So please... Take the time to celebrate those successes. The thing that I find so beneficial, so inspiring about multi-level marketing type groups. And there is a lot of a lot of negative press. That goes along with that. With network marketing. Ponzi schemes are what they're often synonymous with. But you know what they do really well? And it almost has this religious sort of preachy nature about them. And I can speak to this full transparency because I spent three months in Amway. I know that's like a four-letter word. Three months. Ended up getting out, but I really got to understand a lot about the mindset and the culture, those individuals. And what they did so well is they were so positive and uplifting and celebrated the most minor things in the world. It was it was baffling, the trivial shit that people would get acknowledged and celebrated for. And because of the layers that they had, it trickled down the celebration trickled down. So if your leader was recognized, it then trickled down to, well, these are the people that helped me get here. That trickled down to those people, to those people, to those people, to the newbie who was being recruited to come in, being celebrated for simply showing up. 
We're now celebrating for people just showing up. It has so much of that feel to everybody getting a ribbon. That there's a ribbon, and I'm not talking about participation ribbons. I'm talking about first through 20th place type ribbon. Everybody's a winner. And it, that in itself has a lot of negative fuel to it right now because we're not toughening up. We're not teaching our children how to fail and how to fail with grace. And that is something that we will talk about it for a future show. I believe that it is an issue. However, I think if we use the analogy of the pendulum, we have gone almost too far. We need to swing it back and get it more in the middle where we can celebrate and relish those small wins and let it be a snowball effect to build upon itself. And the last thing to ensure that you're not settling or if you are settling, that's for the right reasons, is to take some time and define what makes you happy. And once you define that, constantly and consistently pursue that. If, like my girlfriend Jean, if having a pint of ice cream, one pint of ice cream every week, is what makes you happy, and I'll be damned, you should have a pint of ice cream every single week. She is consistent as hell about her ice cream that she has. Because it makes her happy. It builds her psyche. Now, some people could be critical and talk to her, which I personally would never do, but other individuals could look at her and say, well, you know, for health reasons, for aesthetic reasons, for all these different, in order to achieve your goals, yeah, you might want to, you know, cut that out. Maybe, maybe once a month, maybe once every three months, or reward yourself when you hit your goal of deadlifting an entire F-150 or whatever the hell she's trying to pursue right now. But we restrict ourselves so much. We hold back. We delay happiness to such a degree that it goes the other way. And now we are not happy. It affects our psyche. It affects our morale. And it affects our performance. It's not a matter of settling to do what makes you happy. And some people have the opinion that they can't pursue being happy. That that's a selfish thing. It's a selfish act. I couldn't possibly pursue something that would make me happy. I constantly and consistently have to be in the mindset of of servicing others. Always altruistic. If that makes you happy, however, then you should absolutely do it. It doesn't mean you're a bad person if what you're consistently doing doesn't make you happy. That doesn't mean you're settling. One way or the other. If you choose to continue to do it because it makes you happy, or if you choose to go another direction because it's not, Oh, you're a quitter. No, I'm pivoting. So in recap, we talked about the idea of settling and how socially and throughout society, we are never satisfied. We gave three general examples of individuals' career spaces 
of people that are never satisfied. The first being a general manager, whether that be for a business, a restaurant, a sports team. These are tweakers constantly and consistently trying to optimize and always improving. The other category would be artist, writer, musician. The example that a musician can spend years on a new album. And then athletes. We talked about Usain Bolt and doing winning the gold medal for the 100 and 200 meter dash and being incest with himself for not breaking the world record in his last race. The Rolling Stones can't get no satisfaction accurately portrays how socially we have a negative connotation with the term settling. A couple different articles that were suggested stop settling for the myth of work-life balance and choose to live and why settling is hard work. And then the three ideas to ensure you're moving forward and yet not experiencing those negative connotations that the word settling has because really the only way that settle, to settle in, that is the only way that it is has a positive social connotation, is to settle in. Otherwise, settling tends to have a very negative feel to it. So the first thing, be the best that you can be. Pursuing that, doing your absolute best, and optimizing yourself. But not to the point where It consumes you to the point you're not able to do anything else. Second, find ways to celebrate and relish successes. There's a balancing act socially that we feel like we're celebrating too many successes. And so as a result, I think we've gone too far the other way. That nothing is ever good enough. And we need to find ways to snowball that success. Find ways to celebrate. It will enable us to enjoy the journey more. And then finally, define what makes you happy and constantly and consistently pursue that. If we can do those three things, be the best you can be, find ways to celebrate and relish successes, and define what makes you happy and constantly and consistently pursue that, then that negative feel of settling will diminish. It will evaporate. We will be the best that we can be. We will enjoy life. And we will consistently and constantly pursue that joy. I want to thank you all for listening in today. Please check out the website at pausethinkconsider.com slash Settle. And don't forget to send me an email, jesse at pausethinkconsider.com. That's J E S S E. And tell me what your favorite episode to date that you have listened to. Let me know. I look forward to talking to you all again next week on Pause, Think, Consider.